before we came here, we were involved in another uh, session uh, late this morning with two people who have fallen in love, okay? And they fell in love, and now they're, they're not, one's not so sure about the mind training anymore. The love seems a little more important. The lovey-dovey stuff seems more important than the mind training. But, you know, in manner of speaking and so forth, or maybe it's just not even in those words, it's more like, well, my intuition is telling me that, that this is a great love and then I must follow this love and, and you know, and I, I, I know there's projects and I know there's guidance and I know there's instructions, but I want to put all that aside for the moment <laughs> because I'm in love, in love and I want to follow that. So we had a nice, session around that, did you say? Very good session. I was just saying that, you know, the, because the purpose is they put a hold on doing the part of the mind that's the instinction of that part. So the relationship can be used to undo that part of the mind, but nobody really knows how to do it individually, because you can't help but see things through the ego perspective and ego filters. Yeah, I wish we had videotaped it. I'm in love with this part. I feel I need to spend more time with this part and talk more to this part than that part or these parts. You know, you could have we could have done it in terms of parts and whole. And meanwhile, the whole is this beautiful presence that's undoing the perception of the parts. And the part doth protest. <laughs> but yet, the joy is underneath knowing the inevitability of the whole, you know. Uh, Joel Colesmith, who, who kind of gave this kind of graphic, this graphic symbol, kind of, I think it was in reference, I think, to the, the, the human condition, I think, but he called it a parenthesis in eternity. If you imagine trying to put a parenthesis in eternity, you know, that's, that's like trying to chop your hole into parts and put your little parentheses in there. And, you know, it's laughable, and heaven is funny for that reason, but it's not funny to parts. Parts do not think that's funny at all. They make a big deal when parts split up. They make a big deal when parts come together. And they're not happy at anything that threatens their part view, their partial view. And so, you know, that's, you could do a whole comedy skit on that, but that's, it's, it goes beyond marital counseling or couples counseling. It's, it's into the, the divine comedy. But that's, you have to just deal with what you're facing and that's, you know, a part is a snub. We were talking about snubs before, if, you know, to the extent that you believe in parts is to the extent that you believe in snubs. Only parts can be snubbed. The whole has never been snubbed. This is not beautiful to think about it, that, you know, if you want to be in nirvana or heaven and, or snublessness, that you have to, you actually have to, you know, release the concepts of the parts. And there are seeming steps, you know, you aren't, Jesus says, don't feel that you'll be hurled into reality. So you're not going to be hurled into reality. But there are gentle steps, there are miracles that light the way, that, that take your mind into vaster and vaster experiences that is really more symbolic of your readiness to, to experience the whole. It's the only thing going on, it's the only it's the only game in town, really. So you, you desire that experience of, of love, and, and we might say just by desiring that, you're calling that forth, you're calling that into awareness, and anything that's unlike that experience of love will come up 
into awareness or forgiveness. So that's how it works.